And welcome back, this is your man Warrior and I am excited about this video. This is gonna be a video just to simply showcase a new benefit I will have for exclusively for my Patreon supporters. Now I know not everybody can support me through Patreon and that is fine, but imagine if you will, if every subscriber asked me to do a roster review I would have 1,600 roster reviews tomorrow. It's physically impossible. I'd spend four years doing reviews and I'd still never be able to keep up. So because of that, this is something I really just cannot do but for a few people. And so for those individuals who wish to sponsor me through Patreon, I will be doing a character uh, or roster analysis for them. I will pick them at random. If you wanna learn more about how to support me and my channel at Patreon, all you have to do is go to my YouTube uh, channel, go to the About screen and you can read more about it there. But for the vast majority of you, your support by watching and subscribing and liking my videos is all that I need and I am very appreciative for those. But I do wanna showcase this for anybody who thinks this is uh, cool. Now, normally I would probably send your video to you privately so that way you don't have it for the world to see, but this Magix is actually my brother in real life and has given me permission to do this so that way we have a showcase video to show what this is all about. Now again, this review is going to be obviously my opinion. It is what it is, just take it with a grain of salt, but I do want to show you um, all the things that I will go over with him. So the first thing you notice is Arena Squad on the left, and directly below you see he's at 268. Now that is not bad, I actually say to stay in the top 500 if you can, and he is. He's been playing for less than three months. He's a total level of 76, which tells you pretty much anyone within three months can get to almost level 80 without spending a penny because my brother, Magix, is completely free to play. He has literally not spent one penny in the game. Now, a basic analysis of his arena squad, some things I see he's doing right. He has Luminara as the lead. That is not a bad decision as Luminara gives evasion to the team and the evasion works very well. So if you don't have Old Ben or you don't have Old Ben very high, she's a great substitute. Plus she's a healer and she's a mighty powerful attacker. So I like that. I also like that he's using Leia and Rey, who are two of some of the best DPS or damage per second characters in the game for individual single targeting DPS. Those are great, and it looks like he's maxed them out as best he can. Um, the, the two other characters, um, I like Genocean, Genocean Soldier in there. I think that's a great addition to his team. However, I, my wish, my, I, my takeaway would be that he would be at seven stars by now. That's a very easy farm. And so, and he's much stronger at six and then at seven stars, those multipliers in the sixth and seventh just make for a significant amount of damage more. He'll be laying down even more damage than you'll see him currently doing. And then Old Daka. Old Daka has her place. She's definitely worth the farm and you were right in getting her. However, I don't know if she would be the right person in your arena team. My suggestion would be to get Genocean Soldier up to seven star and then put a tank in Old Daka's spot. I would highly recommend Royal Guard for two reasons. One, you have a lot of DPS characters who are going to need protected automatically if they take accidentally a little more damage than they were desiring. <laughs> and two, old Daka stuns, Royal Guard stuns as well. So if you need that stun or like that stun that old Daka is providing, then this would definitely be a great replacement. And a tank, just if you're going to keep your position, you're going to want to add a tank to the team unless you've got a bunch of AOE characters. So that's my arena squad suggestions, but you're doing a great job. Everything on the arena looks good. To the right, your uh, PvP battles just showcases how uh, how little you've been in the game. Um, your battles won hard and, and easy, just show how much farming you've been trying to do. Your Galactic Battles 1 looks great for how long you've been playing the game, which means that you are completing those many times. Now the Guild Raids and Currency, there's a great rule of thumb that you should be earning for every raid that your team does, because you know you can only do one raid about every three days or so, two to three days, is a uh, thousand for every raid. So if you've done 30 raids, you should have 30,000 guild currency. And the way that works is you're gonna get between four to 600 out of the raid and you're gonna get another four to 600 out of your dailies. Um, and so you should be getting as a good rule of thumb about a thousand. If people don't look at this, then they don't know whether they're in a good raid or not, but at, or guild. But as a good suggestion of thumb, if you're not getting at least a thousand on here per 
raid, then you're not in a good guild and you probably should consider going in another guild. Now your guild, albeit a smaller guild, is not doing bad at all. You have 33 guild raids won and you're at 30, over 31,000 guild currency. That looks great. That means you're averaging you know, almost 1,000 currency per raid. So that looks great. And you're donating gear to your to your guild, I would highly recommend that. So good job on you for being a team player. Now let's go into the inventory and go through this. It will be pretty quick to go through. <clears throat> so I'm gonna kind of go over these characters as they sit on this screen. And actually, yeah, let's just leave it as it is on the screen. So on the top left, you have Admiral Akbar. I'm gonna tell you there's gonna be three priorities. You're gonna either have priority A, which is keep farming them, gearing them, and developing them. You're gonna have priority Two, which is priority B, which is gonna be, you need to probably put farming and gearing on the back burner for these particular characters. However, you'll eventually wanna fully develop these characters as well. And then the third priority is gonna be stop. Don't farm these characters any, far, any further. Now the good news is, since you are free to play, you do not have many characters in here, even after three months, you've only got four rows, essentially, of characters. So you're gonna end up developing probably all of these characters, but about three. So you, you, you really haven't made any mistakes, so to speak. Now for Admiral Akbar, I would continue putting him in priority um, one or priority A and farming him up and gearing him and developing him. As far as Tebow goes, again, I would do the same thing. I would continue to farm, gear him up, and uh, develop him. Barris Offi, I would have her. I know you call her, uh, you called her Barris Coffee. That's your nickname for her. That's pretty funny. But Barris Coffee or Barris Offi is great. I'm sure that's how you're getting through your galactic wars each and every day. So I would continue to keep her as priority one. Royal Guard is up there and I would continue. I know he's a difficult farm, but I would very much make him high priority number one to get him farmed as well. Princess Leia, she's priority number one as well. When I say priority number one, I mean like top priority. These are all characters you should continue on. And Luminara, so the top row, all of them you need to focus on and keep focused on. The next row down, you should be focusing on GS, Biggs Darklighter, Jedi Consular and Rey. Now I know a lot of people are probably wondering why I skipped Darth Vader and Darth Sidious. Couple of reasons. One, the other characters I just mentioned have more usability in more areas of the game. Two, your Darth Sidious is pretty maxed already uh, for where you're at. And Darth Vader's gonna be, uh, he's just, he's easy, pretty easy to gear, but he's just uh, tough. He's really not as usable in this earlier level as he does later on. And so I would have Darth Vader and Darth Sidious kind of as priority B or priority number two. I wouldn't worry as much about them. They don't have quite as much usability, uh, playability. Now, if you're using Darth Sidious in your Galactic War, and or if you're using Darth Vader and Darth Sidious in your dark side missions, then you could continue to keep them in your first priority, but um, you really only need to focus on five dark side and five light side, and hopefully you can mesh those 10 characters into your arena team, uh, your galactic war team, and the dark side light side teams that you need, and to, to minimize or mitigate how many characters you have to go for. Um, so that's the next row. I would definitely raid Jedi, Biggs and GS, farm them up, put them priority number one. And then uh, Darth Vader, Darth Sidious kind of on the back burner, although um, you may need to farm them up when you're, when you're trying to complete dark side missions. As far as the next, old Daka, I would definitely, you've got her up pretty good. I would definitely kind of um, keep her where she's at or put her on the back burner. Unless you're using her again for the dark side missions, she may be critical in completing those dark side missions. Um, IG-86, I would put on the back burner. Snow Trooper, I would put on the back burner, although both of those characters at some point you will want to develop. Luke Skywalker, I would put on the back burner, although I will tell you that he again will be a rebel that you'll need for rebel uh, teams, and he's not a bad rebel at all. Chewbacca, I would put on the back burner, and I would put him on the back burner because he uh, is a great scoundrel, and you may want to develop him for that, but um, he's not as important as all the other characters up top. Now, this might surprise a lot of people, but I would put the Scarif Rebel Pathfinder at um, top priority, priority number one, priority A, just like all these other characters you're developing. And the reason for that is you are tank weak. You don't have a lot of tanks at all, and they're not developed very well. And so he is a great new rebel and tank and turn meter manipulator, plus an AOE. So he's a great tank 
and I've seen him in action. He is uh, phenomenal uh, as a tank. So, and he's actually relatively easy to gear up, not too bad. So I would recommend starting to focus on and develop him. The next row down, I would say Ewok Elder is borderline. If you're gonna use him for the raids with Tebow, then you would want him in your top priority. But if not, then keep him kind of on the back burner. Ahsoka, uh, Ahsoka Tano, I would put her on the back burner. Although if you're trying to develop Jedi for the Yoda event, I understand why you've put some time and energy into her. Again, Count Dooku, I would put him on the back burner. I know he was relevant a few months back, but he's becoming less relevant. He's so Jedi specific that um, I would just not focus on him as much right now. Jedi Knight Guardian, this is one of the three that I would say, stop, stop, stop. I would not put another bit of energy into Talia. There's so many other characters that are good for dark side missions, and there's so many other characters you can use for every other aspect. I just do not see her as really uh, a character you should spend any more energy into. I know that she was developed early on for you. It was one of the few dark side characters you had, and so you used what you had because you were free to play. This does happen to free to play characters a lot, so you did what you did, but I wouldn't invest any more in her, and it looks like you haven't since she's on the bottom of the barrel. Ewok Scout, I would put him on the back burner. However, if you're going to be doing the raids and you're using a Tebow lead and you're wanting to do turn meter reduction and you want to use Qui-Gon Jinn for turn meter reduction, I would use Ewok Scout since you can't get Rex yet as your other turn meter reducer as Ewok Scout is a phenomenal turn meter reducer. But for now on the back burner. And then Clone Sergeant is the other one. It's Satalia, Jedi Knight Guardian, and Clone Sergeant. I would ignore all three of those indefinitely, especially for your free-to-play and who you have available. I would not develop any of those three at all. It looks like you gave up on Clone Sergeant early on, which was good. And I'm a Gun D is a phenomenal Jedi, and you have a limited number of Jedi to develop, and so I would highly recommend I'm a Gun D and get him start up, geared up, so you can get your Yoda. Now, the only two characters that I do not see in here that I would highly, 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 highly recommend is Lando Calrissian. He's a scoundrel, a great leader for scoundrels, high DPS uh, because he does an AoE and he's an easy farm early on. You don't even have him unlocked. I would highly recommend Lando Calrissian as somebody to focus on. The other person is Qui-Gon Jinn. Qui-Gon Jinn is a relatively easy farm and I would put him as number one priority over everybody else in the store where you farm him. So he should have already been a seven star in my opinion. And so I would recommend whatever store he comes out of at the top of my head, I can't remember. I would change your priority to him and I would get Qui-Gon Jinn both because he's one of the best Jedi in the game. Two, because he'll help you with raids. Um, and three, he'll help you get your Yoda. Plus, he's a great dispeller for on your team. If you had him on your team, you wouldn't have to worry about those tanks that everybody has. You could just dispel the tank and continue doing your mass damage with your Ray and your Leia with your team. So Qui-Gon Jinn is not on here. Put him in top priority. Uh, Lando Calrissian put him top priority, but it looks like all in all, you've prioritized your characters pretty well. You've focused on who you can. And one of those things that you notice is you're a level 76 and everybody else in your team is not. And that happens. Unfortunately, there is a credit crunch where you'll never have enough credit. And if you're not spending money on the game, you'll never will have enough credit. So with that, I hope this helps you figure out your priority list and how you're going to restructure. For all of you out there, if this is something you liked and you really want to know who you should give up or who you should be focused on and you want my opinion on it, you can always go to my YouTube channel, click on the about, learn more about Patreon. And if you are one of the few that decide you want to sponsor me, I will do one of these reviews and send it to you privately. I appreciate your time. Have a wonderful afternoon. As always, keep your gaming on. Warrior out.